It's just a minute after 7 p.m. And you know it's time for Politics Today Live on Channels Television. I'm Sean Joaquin Ballet. Welcome on board, everyone. It's a Monday. The day beginning the week where most of the critical decisions as relating to who becomes a flag bearer of the major political parties begin. The journey starts right now on how the political parties are going to swim around deciding who their flag bearers will be. Let's get started, everyone. The Central Bank Governor, Mr. Godwin MFLA, has withdrawn the suit he filed against the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, and the Attorney General of the Federation over his presidential ambition. MFLA, through his counsel, Sivana Zamaliki, told Justice Ahmed Mohammed that a notice of discontinuance had been filed and served on the defendants in the matter. Maliki will held a brief on behalf of Chief Michael Zakame said, though the matter was scheduled for mention, they had a Mephiles instruction to withdraw the suit. He prayed the court to discontinue the suit and make an order striking it out. Issues have not been joined by parties in the suit, citing order 50 of the rules of the court. Although lawyer to the fourth defendant, John Aikokopo Martins, opposed Mephiles intention to withdraw the suit, he urged the court to dismiss the suit with 1.5 million naira. In his ruling, Justice Mohammed held that MFLA had the right to file the notice of withdrawal. He said the notice of discontinuance was valid and accordingly struck out. The Central Bank Governor had on May the 9th reported that MFLA, through his lawyer, Ozakama, had approached the court with an ex parte motion seeking the court's interpretation as to whether he could run for the 2023 presidential primary while he owes office as the governor of the CBN. So much more to talk about tonight on the program. Stay with me because I'd like to bring you up to speed with some of the stories that happen around your world of politics in Nigeria. Let's check out our political roundup. Senator Philip Aduda, a seventh senator from the Federal Capital Territory, has emerged the senatorial candidate of the People's Democratic Party in the FCT. Aduda emerged unopposed as 190 out of the 191 accredited delegates cast their votes for the sole contestant. I will do the best that I can to ensure that the FCT is not shortchanged, to ensure that I do the best that I can to bring about developmental uh, projects like I've always done, to ensure various empowerment programs and to ensure employment for our team in youths. Vice President Professor Yemi Oshibajo has visited Kaduna State in continuation of his presidential consultation ahead of the All Progressives Congress primary. He was in the company of Governor Nasser El Rafai and the Director General of his campaign, Senator Kabir Gaya, among other top government officials. We talked about the wide range of issues, the economy, security, education, healthcare. The presidential aspirant, Tain Jack Rich, says the country's future is at stake, and in order to secure it, delegates must vote wisely for the right candidate. He said this while preaching to delegates in Bauchi states that he is the best candidate for the nation's top job. Jobs for our youth. I will make sure that our traditional rulers are respected, and I will ensure that the value system that we are known for as respect for the elders will be enshrined in the manner that we do things. While at the Emir's palace, he presented a copy of his blueprint to the Emir of Bauchi. The APC aspirant has also been to Owiri, Enugu and Borno states, where he met with delegates to canvass for votes. If you, God forbid, vote for the wrong person, and that wrong person takes a decision, and the decision does not mean well for our country and for you, You've not, you've not succeeded. The coast is now clear for Governor Simon Lalong, who has emerged as the sole candidate of the All Progressives Congress Plateau South Senatorial District, following the withdrawal of Senator Nora Dadouz from the race. Addressing journalists at her residence in just the Plateau State Capital, Senator Dadouz debunks insinuation of a rift between her and the governor, as she insists that Governor Lalong has been a pillar in her quest to represent the people of the southern zone of the state. After I have conquered, why should I remain? Let others come also, see, and conquer. And that is what democracy is all about. Another governor who's gotten sole candidature is the governor of Benway State, Samuel Otom, 
The People's Democratic Party in Benue State declared him as the winner of the party's tickets for the 2023 Benue Northwest Senatorial District after emerging the sole candidate of the party from the zone. Benue people, especially Benue Northwest Senatorial District, for adopting me as the sole candidate of the PDP for the senatorial election in this zone. I'm very grateful. Having submitted his nomination form to contest the Imo North senatorial seat in the 2023 election, the former governor of Imo State, Ikedio Hakim, has called on the state executives of the party in Imo State, led by the state's chairman, MacDonald Amadi, to do all it can to ensure that the APC emerges victorious in all the positions in the 2023 general elections in Imo State. To take strategy to know how and to release the arrow. What we have come here today is to tell him to release the arrow so that we can go and win the election for the party. The national chairman of the APC, Senator Abdullahi Adamu, has inaugurated the campaign committee for the AKT 2022 governorship election. The committee is headed by Kebi State Governor Atiku Bagudu and Deputy Senate President Ovi Omagege as deputy chairman. And a former chieftain of the All Progressives Congress in Zamfara State, Daoud Alawal, has dumped the party for the People's Democratic Party. Mr. Daoud has also declared his governorship ambition in the state on the platform of the PDP. It is just a matter of time, inshallah, we will take over and do what is right. There you go. You've been served your political roundup stories. Let's begin, everyone. The All Progressive Congress APC has fixed a new date for the screening of its presidential aspirants for the 2023 general elections. The party's national organizing, organizing secretary, Zulaiman Algungu, announced the new plans today in Abuja. He said the party will be screening the 228 presidential aspirants who obtain nomination forms on Tuesday, May the 24th, and Wednesday, May the 25th, at the Transcorp Hilton Hotel in Abuja. Earlier on Sunday, the party had postponed its screening exercise for the second time after it failed to hold last weekend, but no reason was given for the cha uh, change in plan. Well, presidential aspirants from the southeast region of the country on the platform of the ruling APC, about six of them or so, met yesterday and they said they have agreed to work together with anyone of them picked by the party to fly the presidential flag. One of the aspirants who led that meeting yesterday was a former Senate president, Senator Ken Inamani. It was a former Senate president who assumed that role in perhaps one of the most turbulent political period, if not in the country, or in the National Assembly. In the nation's uh, history at the moment, it was a very controversial time also where the third term bid became a very touchy issue. Kenny Namani has since joined the APC from the PDP, a party he announced at one time that he was taking sabbatical from. Senator Ken Namani tonight joins me live in our Abuja studio. Thank you so much, Senator Namani, for Thank joining you. us tonight. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. I appreciate it. Uh, the screening for the presidential uh, primary will begin tomorrow. Okay. You ready for it? Very much ready. Even if it begins this night. <laughs> you are upbeat about it. It's okay. I'm ready for it. I'm you ready for prime time. <laughs> yeah. You're perhaps one of the most experienced of the lot. Well. Um, you see yourself as such. Uh, there are many experienced people uh, in the lineup, especially from the Southeast, because there's a moral burden on all the parties to ensure that they zone their presidential uh, ticket or slot to southeast or to south to begin with. And zoning to the south, uh, we we'll talk specifically about southeast because I, I say a moral burden on the parties. It's, it's not just APC, all the other parties. Uh, we, all the offices in the National Working Committee were filled up based on rotation. The offices held in the north, 
moved down south. The one in the south moved up north. I said more about them because having done that, and we got to the, the critical stage to, to fill the, the vacancy, the, the supposed vacancy, uh, that is the presidential seat, the symbol of our democracy, the presidential uh, seat. Why it has been thrown open, why it's been thrown open, contradicts the rotational aspect that has been adopted. As I said there's a moral burden on the party or parties. But, it, but it's, to not ensure. it's not obligatory. Well, uh, morally, I'm, a, I'm using the word moral. Yeah. I'm using the word moral. Because the exception to this is the PDP, where the party you belong, which is almost cast in the constitution of the PDP to recognize rotational presidency. But in your party, the APC, although it talks about uh, recognition of um, federal character, Correct. which is in line with the Nigerian constitution, so it's a moral burden, but your party is not bound by it. Uh, well, but suddenly, if a, a match is being played, suddenly you, you start pushing the goalpost back. How come we did not throw open the election of the chairman, the deputy chairman, and the, the rest of the National Working Committee members? Should have been thrown open so people can apply from whichever zone. Was this, was this a part of the concentration when that was, well, that was happening, when the no, national I, offices was being considered I, for I, zoning? I would say yes. Why I'm saying yes is that I already established that the offices held in the north will go down to the south. The one from the south will go up, up north. So why a particular one has to uh, change, that is the, the seat of the president, uh, is thrown open. Why didn't we throw open the, the other offices? That's the point I'm making. It's not that it's obligatory. But it, 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 it kind of, it, will abort, it borders on the uh, uh, thing you may call uh, equity, fairness, and justice. Let me, uh, before I go, I mean, leave the issue of zoning and the southeast. Um, is the southeast, as the APC is presently constituted, ready to take up that, that responsibility? Or is a party really ready uh, to allow a Southeast person to fly its flag? Well, that is a decision to be made by the party. There's no one zone in Nigeria that has a monopoly of people that are ready to take up the mantle of leadership. No one, it, it is not peculiar to any zone. If we look deep, we will find capable hands. And when, uh, I can give you an instance. When I came to Senate, Senate in, from 2005, uh, most Nigerians were looking down on the National Assembly. There was a case, cases of what you call banana appeals. Leadership of Senate or the House were being changed every day like toilet paper, mm -hmm. very uh, repeatedly. When we came, we tried to reinvent the National Assembly by doing what? By making sure that we organize, we gave members hope and created committees utilizing people putting round pegs in round holes because the National Assembly has highly qualified people. We made sure that people uh, saw the opportunity of proving themselves or showing that they can deliver. We, we tried and changed the, the, the impression people had about National Assembly, and that is our leadership. I'm not sure the APC is in short supply of uh, people of Igbo extraction Correct. to fly its flag. But it's another thing entirely, whether the, the party as a unit, as a group of people, as an association, is ready morally or mentally or psychologically to cede the, his presidential flag to an, ab, uh, an able man. Do you see a party that is ready for that? Well, I think that borders on the issue of uh, ability to unite the country. The situation calls for 
deepening our democracy, making people feel that they belong, hope, giving people hope. And without that, you have people, disgruntled citizens, and no one section can enjoy that. We have to give the people the impression that Nigeria is for every person. And as, as we have admitted, the South East is, is not short of people that can play that role. Well, is your, I mean, as your friends and your, your me members of your party, have they come to realization of your own uh, view of how things are, the necessity from your own standpoint that Nigeria needs an Igbo man to be president? Has your party realized that? Have you been able to convince your party members from all the zones of the country? That is what we are trying to do. We are trying to persuade them. Are they seeing reasons? It's, it's not, uh, we're not threatening any person. We are trying to show reasons why it is necessary for us to adhere to that principle you mentioned, the federal character principle, that let no section feel alienated. Alienation will make people feel hopeless. And we don't want that. We want all hands to be on deck. Is the Igbo zone, is the Igbo, are the Igbo people marginalized? Uh, I'm, saying, I'm saying that we should create a situation where every person sees himself or herself as a citizen of Nigeria. But as a leader of, from that region, do you think your people are marginalized in this country? Some people feel marginalized, yes. But do you think they are marginalized? To some extent. What are the reasons? The On reasons what basis? For, no, no. It, it, uh, I, I, I'll give you an, an instance now. Mm. I said, if we have adopted the, the principle of rotation, and our people are expecting that this time around, that the issue of presidency, the, the South Easterners should have a slot. I mean, should have a go at it. And as I already indicated, it is not uh, that we don't have people that can try to bring, to unify the country and achieve more success for the nation. We, we do have. And I said it's, it's available in other zones too. So, I mean, you were at the meeting at Senator Rocha Sokorocha's house. Yes, I was. Are the six or so of you ready to have a consensus candidate? We are. That is to show that we can work together. Any person identified among the, the people that have shown interest we will work with that individual. When are you going to produce a consensus candidate? We don't have any specific date for it, but we are, we are, we are talking to ourselves. Primary is on Sunday and Monday. Yes, we still have a day makes a difference in a political situation. We understand that the president might be meeting all the aspirants. When is that meeting going to happen? I have no idea. But is there a possibility of a consensus? candidate for the party what ahead a, of the primary? Most, all of us are lawyer party members. Whatever the party thinks that can help the party retain power and deliver services to Nigerians, we are for it. But some members, I mean, some aspirants are saying they don't want consensus. I, I didn't hear any person say that yesterday. No, I'm not talking about... Oh, you're talking uh, about generality. I'm talking about out of the 28, there are a few people who say, no, let us go to the, the arena. Let's test the popularity. Well, it's the way for the party to, to determine that, whatever the party decides. We'll talk about supremacy of the party. We cannot dictate for the party. What kind of leader does Nigeria need right now? Nigeria, you see, the fate of black race rests squarely on the shoulders of the most populous black nation on earth, and that's Nigeria. And that means it, it's expedient that Nigeria has a leader who, who is well exposed, who can bring people together, motivate people enough for us to overcome so many problems that we are facing. We, we need a leader. That's why the example I was trying to show you about National Assembly. I was the chairman of National Assembly. I was on driver's seat. I was able to bring every person together. And before I left Senate, Till today, nobody has had anything about banana appeals. We stopped that. We made sure that committees going to carry out their oversight function 
that they don't go there and demand for anything. Yeah, because I we made a budget for them. Mm. I told, I, we, we said during a closed session, several of them we had, that if any committee chairman is in trouble for demanding or receiving anything, you are your own. Because we made sure that for the small amount that we normally get, we made sure that every person got, every committee got enough fund mm. to carry out their oversight function. Right. So, I mean, I'm asking you this question because not only those who have ideas, but also people who can play the right politics. And uh, a lot of people have raised questions, even the National Assembly that you made mention, from Evans, Ewerim, to Chuba, Okadibo, Adolfos, Wabara. The Southeast had a uh, uh, who have been criticized about the way they play their part. It, it does look like you were the ones, uh, it got to your turn, and that uh, incessant change in the leadership of the National Assembly stopped. Yes. So um, the question is that the perception of the rest of the region about, for example, that leadership of the National Assembly, the, a cohesive political uh, culture, is the South is giving a new uh, perception to the rest of the region about the capacity to have a politics that is, doesn't look like the ones that we saw that preceded your time in the National Assembly? Well, I, I already implied that leadership matters. That you changed the, the, the scheme of things. There has not been any ban appeals after I left because we set the standard. To fight public corruption, mm -hmm. you must be transparent yourself as the leader. So Enamani, Ken Enamani was the man who put a stop to it. I mean, the, the question is that I didn't do are, we seeing, are we seeing a new phase of Igbo politics in the national scheme of things now? Are Nigerians supposed to expect something different from, from Igbo politicians? If you look at the array of people who have come out to declare their interest to run, they're all highly qualified and ready to go. And that tells you that, as I said, if you look deep in, in any zone in Nigeria, you will find people that can deliver this efficient and effective service to the nation. People that can unify the country. It's not peculiar to any particular zone. I, we have preponderance of those that can do the work. Is Ken Namani the best man for the job? I will not say I'm the best, but I'm among those that you can say tested and trusted. Can Nigerian trust you with that number one seat? And they did in the past. I was number three citizen. I will not found one in anywhere until I left. <sighs> Nobody has invited me for any, for any investigation anywhere in the world to date. And we made changes that brought about a lasting, abiding uh, progress in the National Assembly. You're going to be 74 Which, years. Yes, in November. Is age a problem for your ambition? I'm enjoying good health. And uh, I, I think uh, uh, age is, uh, is it's about just number. Because in I, this... I look even younger than yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so that, just that like they say, love is in the eye, uh, oh, in the eye of the beholder. Oh, beholder yes. Yeah, yeah. Age is a, is a matter of the mind, though. <laughs> <laughs> and health is what we, we, I mean, is a gift from God. Oh, yes. But it, the question is about leadership of this country, how mobile, the sagacity of a leader, how physically equipped a person could be, um, and also whether or not the person is in turn with what has become a jet age, the requirement of leading this particular nation at this time. Do yes. you have the, the requisite uh, skills to be able to, skill set to be able to do that? To be honest with you, le leadership is your ability to work with others and through others. Ability to identify people who you don't feel embarrassed that they are more knowledgeable than yourself in a particular field. Your ability to assemble them to deliver results that is required. You cannot be a master of everything, but your ability to build that, that coalition that will deliver to the people, not minding where the person comes from. When I was in National Assembly again, <laughs> my chief of staff, 
Dr. Sally Hubelo from Adamawa, a fantastic human being. This present leader of the House of Reps, Dogua, was one of my assistants. He worked with me when I was a Senate president. I was able to bring <coughs> people from far and wide to deliver results. I didn't do it alone. And I was so fortunate I had so many senators, well-educated, well-exposed, who helped me to achieve objective. Nigeria is faced with That's problems. That's what I can do for Nigeria, too. Nigeria is faced with problems on all sides. Yes. Security, yes. economy, issues of unity. It will det it demand several hours, more than 10, 12 hours of working to fix this country. Correct. And so that's the question. When the age issue comes uh, to, to, to the table, people ask, I mean, can you spend 15, 16 hours attending to the, to the problem of Nigeria? i tell you something. One of the major problems here now we're facing is insecurity. If I had the opportunity, the first thing I would do is to set up a bipartisan commission. Because if you recall what transpired in US, 9-11, when the World Trade Center was knocked down in New York, incidentally, I was in Old Westbury, New York, that very morning. United States government set up a commission to study what happened, why the failure in the security services. That gave birth to homeland security. If we set up a bipartisan commission in Nigeria to study why is our, uh, how come that our forces perform very, very well outside, but have not been able to eradicate, uh, uh, what do you call them now? The, the people in, uh, giving trouble in, in the Northeast and the kidnappers and all kinds of people, all kinds of criminals, miscreants. How come we have not been able to take care of Boko Haram? Is that the failure of our forces, or the poor equipment, poor sharing of information among the forces? So many things. The commission can unravel it in one or two months. And then it helps us to know where to go. Right now, if you ask any person, what about Boko Haram? Is it over? It's not over. Every once in a while, we hear that they've killed this person, they've captured this person. So we have to meet the present day challenges by getting present day training. Mm. I said somewhere that Nigerian police force, as it is constituted today, is not able to fight this situation that we have now. We need a special force trained. We, get, we, we, we appeal to some other countries that have gone through similar problems to come and train a special crack team of our police to go after them. Not the soldiers. Soldiers are trained to kill and destroy and so on. They are not trained to handle civilian issues. When you see our soldiers at checkpoints, uh, usually I, I say these people are underutilized. Mm. You are not applying their training successfully. So about security, we're talking about develop economic development. We have to have our country secure. Right. People can so, travel from Ibadan to Ileife freely. So you have uh, what it takes to uh, fix the problem? Yes, I can appeal and, and recruit people that can help, and I coordinate it and make sure we achieve results for the nation. Let's wrap up on this note. Your party nomination form is 100 million. You're one of those, I mean, who have spoken and worked on uh, redesigning and redefining our democratic structure, our electoral laws, and uh, issues of corruption, issues of uh, um, mismanagement of, uh, in the public space. It's, it's a major problem of our polity. What would you do differently? And what's your, I mean, you said that you don't like the idea of monetizing uh, politics in Nigeria. What would you do differently? I'm afraid I didn't say I don't like the idea of monetizing money in Nigeria. You like monetizing politics? politics? Uh, no, not <laughs> quite, but politics is expensive. Uh, but we must not shut out the youths, the women, and uh, you know, for a depressed economy, which is a, a global problem right now, I, uh, I figured that uh, some people might be shut out. 
uh, if the cost of buying forms and electoral process is so high. Already we, we have uh, campaign finance uh, laws, but the issue of the buying forms from parties, I think we may have to revisit it. It's expensive to run the electoral process, even for the party and the, for umpire, the electoral umpire, INEC. But I think it is very important that we make it such that uh, I think our party is, is trying to do a bit because it gave discounts to the youths as well as uh, the women. Uh, but uh, we are, as I said, it should be revisited. But on the side of the umpire, I think something is not adding up. And that is to say, the primaries require more time than, than the, the campaign period. The primaries are the, the, the heart of a democracy. If primaries are well conducted, the general election will make a lot of difference. It will be less cumbersome, it will be less acrimonious. So the, the period for the primaries appear to be short, as far as I can see. Whereas we should have allowed more time, it looks like we will have almost eight months or more of a, a campaign period, mm. kind of. Yeah. Uh, that number of months should have been added, to, to, should have been pulled back and added for the primaries, so that the parties can get it well, well, and. Uh, it just as we help. close now, I wish I could ask you a few more questions, but we don't have the time. But just in 30 seconds, if a, an aspirant of a Southeast extraction does not get the ticket of the APC, what would you do? We will support our party to make sure we retain power and serve Nigerians and improve on the legacies of the present administration. That's what you would do? Yes. And you will not be That is what is called, I will be disappointed, yes. But that notwithstanding, we uh, still show party loyalty. Senator Kenan Amani, former Senate President, thank you so much for coming on tonight. I thank appreciate you for having it. Me. And I wish you the very best at your screening and uh, at the primaries also. Thank you very much. Well, let's tell you that the First Lady, uh, Ms. Aisha Buhari, is appealing to the ruling APC uh, to include women in the scheme of things as a party picks its candidates for the 2023 general elections. Mrs. Buhari was speaking to journalists at the party secretariat um, shortly after she met with the national chairman, Senator Abdullah Adamu, to congratulate uh, him on his emergence as a national chairman of the APC. The first lady was accompanied by the wife of the vice president, Mrs. Dolakpo Shibajo, and the minister of women affairs, Pauline Talent. and to thank the whole party stewards for the work they are doing and also to seek for their support you know on women women should not be forgotten please but well, that's mrs hersha buari wife of the president the National Consultative Front, an umbrella body of the several Nigerian intellectuals and citizens of third, who have been described as a third force political movement, say they have adopted the Labour Party as a mega party for third force stakeholders and allies for next year's elections. The NCAF is the umbrella body of the third force movement and political alternatives to the APC and PDP. The adoption follows about 15 months of engagement, which led to a reunion between the leadership of the Labour movement and the hierarchy of the Labour Party, jointly led by the President of the Nigerian Labour Congress, Ayuba Waba, and the President of the Trade Union Congress, Kodi Alale. Let's hear from one of the members of the NCF, a former national chairman of the Consci uh, National Conscience Party, and also a former presidential candidate of the party, Alaji Yunus Atanko, who joins us live here in Abuja City. Thanks so much for coming on tonight. Thank you very much for having me, Sean. What led to this decision? Okay. Labour Party is going to be, because we see the likes of uh, Mr. Olisa Bakuba, who belongs to your group, um, Mr. Femi Falano, and all these people still members of your group. Yes, they are. They are. The member of the third force. They are members of NCF. the NCNCF. And, you know, of course, there was some hitches at Benicio and all. But all of us agree that there's no way out of this quagmire without all of us coming together. And let me call it an impression. I'm not 
an ex-chairman of the NCP. I'm still the chairman Sidney, of the NCP. Uh, we are still in court fighting okay, our over battle. Matter. Yes, we are still in court. Very much so in court. So yeah. how did you agree on or did you come to the decision of uh, using the Labour Party platform well, as a mega party platform? Well, the, the truth about this is that we become so elated when we saw the kind of uh, synergy that has been done within the, the, the Labour movement and then the TUC coming together to work together with the Labour Party. You know, there has been a tussle on the Labour Party issue, and now they've come to agree with each other that we can work together in order to salvage this country. The target is about Nigeria. And if we believe in Nigeria, all of us must come together. And that is why we have to have our core political party as a group. When we have that, we cannot go in alliance, which we agree to go in alliance with the political party like the NMPP led by the, uh, Engineer Rabi Musa Konkosu, and we're talking with the uh, PRP uh, being led by uh, um, uh, Alad Falalu, and then supported by eminent Nigerians like uh, Professor Atairu Jega. And then we also been talking in strong terms with the NRM of uh, Rendaso and all. So this group of individuals... Is ADC part of it? ADC. Of course, we've been talking with ADC. In fact, we spoke with close to, I led a committee that spoke with almost nine political parties. We had discussion, deep discussion with nine political parties. From the settlement release, it, I mean, we have been told that the leaders of the Labour Union, the, uh, uh, the Trade Union Congress mm. and the NLC have since obtained the membership card of the Labour Party and they are now uh, actively involved. I can authoritatively confirm that because the chairman, the president of the labor union actually signed his form right in front of Olawale Okuni, who is the secretary of the, and then we deliver it to the office of the chairman of the labor party, uh, uh, barrister Abure. So it is a confirmed story that all of us are working together. Look, Shion, we need to get this country out of the world. See, look at the situation in our country. Look at what is happening in the Boeing state, where a sitting governor is announcing another member of another political party who does not even belong to that party. And then here we are, we are continuing with that level of impunity. How long can we go? It, either you belong to the right, right channels, you are doing the right thing on the right thing, right thing for the Nigerian people, or you are not. There are rules and regulations for engagement for, this, for Nigeria and the electoral system. And yeah, we are very happy with the position of INEC because INEC has now shown resilience and confidence in regard to making sure that the electoral system is sacrosanct and there's no changes in that particular. Mm -hmm. So all of us have agreed that no single political party can achieve this particular challenge of rescue. Nigeria. Is the thought force big enough? Is it mega enough to be able to upstage the APC and PDP from the, the, as a frontline political party? You are talking about 774 lo uh, local government that is being controlled by the NLC. You're talking about the same 774 local government being controlled by the TUC. You're talking about a political party being led by Dr. Rabi Musa Konkosu. You're talking about a political party that has strongly booted on ground like the PRP. You're talking about a political party like the NRN. Not to talk about political party like mine, the National Conscience Party, who are waiting in the wing to align with this. So we are creating a humongous platform that is the choice of Nigerians now. We have done the best we can. We have crossed the Rubicon, we have moved from where we used to stand before, and we're moving ahead to so, present to Nigeria an opportunity so that they can lead. Your ultimate agenda is a presidential election. Not really. When we don't get the grassroots, what is the presidency going to do? We need everybody to come from the grassroots. We need the world leadership. We need the local government. We need the state assembly. We need the st uh, senators. We need the governors. Is it that the presidency is impossible for you to achieve? No. At the end of it, this grand swell will, uh, grand swell will lead to the presidency. Of course, when you have all of us working together and agree, it's a cheap, it's an easy goal for us to get the presidency. You think the time is in 2023? No, it is overripe because the Nigerian people have been agitating for a new alternative. They've been crying that they need a new alternative that will give them an Are you organized that, I mean, are you that organized I just to, be able to, to be able to cause that stare? When last did you hear the Labour Congress, a Labour leader signing a form to join a political party? It has been a long time. So that's to tell you how well organized we are. We are really interested in... I understand that you're planning to make a public show of this. Of course, we intend to address the public very soon. And when we give, the, we, we, we agree on some of the technicalities, you will see all of us coming out in full flag. So, I mean, how can an average voter be able to identify? I mean, the APC, you know, the logo and all of that for the APC, PDP, you know. But when you all of you are coming together, are you asking all the presidential aspirants, all the aspirants of all of these political parties to step down and use the Labour Party? Or what is it? That will be dealt with at the technical committee meeting 
for the alliance. And I know all of the candidates are aware of the danger of losing this opportunity because this opportunity comes in once in a lifetime. The APC is a strong political party who has, among, who has generated humongous sums of money. The PDP is not left behind. And so therefore, any one of us who decided that he's going to do it alone knew the danger of us not winning at all because it could have been better for us to work together as a team to win this and get this particular country on the right path than for all of us to continue going on a splinter all way right. and then losing the track. So we, it's a choice for everybody. You either think of collectively having a big plate or you go into your bedroom and keep on con complaining. We hope that the force will be f uh, strong enough to cause the stare that you are hoping. And we are working very hard and we are determined to do what we need to do mm. for the interests of the Nigerian people. The thought first, Alaji Yunus Atanko, of course, is not uh, a strange face when it comes to Nigeria's politics. And, of course, one of the members of the NCF pushing for the thought first. Thank you so much for coming tonight. God bless the and Federal I wish Republic. You as soon as you are making it public, let us know. We will do so. Thank you so much. God for bless coming. the Federal Republic of Nigeria. That's our show for tonight, everyone. Albeit uh, early closing, we'll stand by as uh, we bring you some uh, obligations that we have before the top of the hour. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. I'm Sean Akimbale. Bye for now.